valor to serve the people regardless of their station. Courage to bring the silence when the anthem sings. Faith to keep my word and the word of my brethren. Trust that the free answer when called. Strong alone, stronger together. This is the freelancer's code of honour, the one they serve under and the one they die under. They serve only to help explore the possibilities of the world, while serving only the very people within the thoughts they strive to protect. But the freelancers have never been around for long. They are what we call a splinter group that formed after the death of Helena Tarsis, and from this point is where our story starts. You may have heard the story of Helena Tarsis, the leader of the Legion of Dawn, and the very first javelin user to take up arms against the Urgoth, an ancient race that 500 years ago enslaved humans for their own bidding. Thanks to her and her disciples, they managed to drive away the Urgoths, push back the chaos of the world, start to rebuild their lives again, and finally find peace in the world. After the death of Helena, many of her disciples split off into three factions that all followed Helena's legacy, but with their own different interpretations. The Sentinels believed the right path to follow was to protect the people of the city and save those that needed saving. The Dominion believed in the path of might, where strength and force is the only thing needed to survive. And the Freelancers were created to uphold the legacy of Helena through the path of valour and carry on protecting the world just like Helena once did. Interestingly, I found that although all the factions have split it off into their own paths, they all share some part of Helena's legacy of what she stood for, even if they are created in their own groups with their own mindset. However, how they follow this is slightly warped and interpreted in their own ways. For example, the Dominion Forces focuses on strength and overwhelming force, which works well on their end, but the care of the people of the Fort is questionable, even though they state what they do is for the sake of humanity. And then you have the Sentinels who focus on protecting the people within the walls and the city itself, and are more of a middle ground between control and protection like chaotic good. And the freelancers work more closely with the Sentinels since both their ideals are similar compared to the Dominions, which is not surprising with the way Dominion treat people. I also find it strange that Helena Tarsis was the only person in the group that kept the group together, but after her death, the group fell apart and split into other factions. Even though we had Arden Vassar, who was the creator of Javelins and a genius of his time, or Helena's husband, Gara de Chronicle, who was there to train and recruit the followers into the Legion of Dawn. These two have as much knowledge and understanding of Helena's goals than anyone else, so it seems strange that no one took up her role. Now, we could say Arden Vassar's children took up a mantle by creating Antium for the people, but how much control they have in the world and how trustworthy they are is currently unknown. Whether this is because of internal strife that appear within the group, or whether other issues laid ahead of them that they believe Helena wouldn't be able to manage is also unknown. But from what I can tell, it would most likely be a clash between ideas that may have not settled right between everyone, considering the role and situation they end up in. And since nothing could have been agreed on, they settled on creating their own paths while taking on Helena's teachings. In today's society, the freelancers are a small, independent group who travel the land and safeguard humanity from any perilous threats, while also working alongside their sentinels to protect the walls from oncoming threats. They are specialised in exploring, fighting, travelling and protecting those who require their assistance, and are known to also deal with Shaper related events that the Sentinels or Arcanists can't deal with. Compared to the Sentinels and Dominion, they are not much of a militarised force, they are in fact more mercs for hire who would do whatever it takes to complete their contracts for a fee, but stay true to protecting the very cities they promise and following in Helena's footsteps. However, this isn't always 100% true, not all freelancers will want to follow the path of good. In fact, some prefer the darker path for their own goals. This can include kidnapping, selling freelancers gear, selling people, selling weaponry, assassination, espionage, or betraying their own allies. What happens to those that follow this path is not fully known, although it is explained that those that commit a crime get outcasted outside the wall, and either survive on their own or become outlaws. From here, a bit of theorising occurs. Corvus enforcers would notify sentinels and freelancers out in the field about freelancers going AWOL, and would either tell them that if they cross the path to either capture them, or if they are made threat, shoot to kill, to 1. destroy the javelin from others, and 2. stop them from retaliating which could cost further lives. If there's no lancers nearby, they probably have a dedicated and specialised group of lancers who hunt down those that stray the path they're meant to follow, and make an example of them for other future lancers, like the specialised groups for the elites in Halo, which are giving orders to hunt down and kill all those that are non-believers in their hunt for the truth. Now to be a proper contracted freelancer, you will need a number of things, 
training, knowledge and versatility out on the field. But all of this can only be made apparent once you receive your standard training and become a Lancer. Unfortunately, I can't seem to find any bits of information that explains how to become a Lancer, or if education is required to become one, which doesn't help explain how the whole process is created, and if you can become one whenever you like, or if there's some kind of screening program put in place to choose what your role will be in society, or even if you just become an apprentice to a freelancer who's willing to teach you the way to become one. So let's theorise. I believe that to become a Lancer, you need education that will cover maths, English and science, with sporting activities to keep you fit, and history lessons covering the legend of the Legion of Dawn and past events. From there, exams will probably be final overall tests for them, and then graduation if successful. From there, if they show talent that could be better used in other areas and want to be specialists in their high risk, high reward job, they will probably be sent to Antium or any other high profile fort that requires new recruits for the role. Afterwards, they will be taught the fundamentals of how javelins are operated, how cataclysm and shaver's death work, the different regions and species, history, how to fight, and how to survive out in the wild. Mix this in with indoor studying, outdoor exercises for a good few years until the participant graduates as a new Lancer in the making. They probably also receive their first SIGINT, which allows them to create a mental link to the javelin and further operate it, something that all javelin users have and one that all javelin users require. After all this is now done, they most likely decide on how they want to utilize their new skills, which can be used for security purposes such as becoming a sentinel, or they become an apprentice, freelancer, and learn more of their boss until they're finally ready to do their own thing, or they just become a freelancer then and then, and start working straight away. It's entirely unknown how society depicts how freelancers start their jobs, but considering what freelancers are tasked with at times, it would make the most sense for them to be completely and utterly prepared before setting foot outside the very gates they are meant to protect. Once settled in, they will need to require a few other things as well. Firstly, they will need to be well equipped for any and every scenario they face, so a dedicated forge and engineers are offered to all freelancers, or some, which provide dedicated equipment for fixing damage javelins, retuning weapon and gear, or adding a new paint job for the fashion minded. Next, they will need a cipher. While out in the field, freelancers are provided with ciphers who act as a coordinator in terms of watching their backs and providing information about the field so on. All freelancers are provided with one cipher, although they can have more if required, which is quite rare. It should be noted that freelancers can still operate without one as not 100% needed, although they provide a lot of help. Next, they will need a javelin, and all javelins are designed around the specific user in mind. Each javelin has their pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages, and different set of abilities that can be tuned to the user's desires. The standard javelin many lancers use are the Ranger class simply for its versatility. While Colossus are rare to see at times, but are the main powerhouse when you need that extra bit of oomph. Interceptors are also rare, and mainly seen for assassination or spy missions. While the Storm Javelin is common enough to be seen by elite group users, but not common enough for many Lancers to see up front in everyday activities. Each Javelin are handcrafted to fit their user's comfortability, and are further designed to protect the user from known life threatening attacks that a normal human wouldn't be able to survive. Javelin also enhance the user's strength and speed, allowing them to keep up against the biggest and dangerous foes that the Anthem creation throws at them. You're not truly a Lancer until you receive your Javelin, which everyone will become accustomed to, to with how powerful they are. What you choose to find your playstyle, well, but it's not unheard of for freelancers to be skilled at using all four Javelins in different scenarios. You're not weighed down by one specific class, so the good side of being a freelancer is the extra freedom you get for piloting whatever you want, as long as you know how to operate them. And that everyone, is everything you need to know about freelancers origins with as much information provided that I could possibly find about them. The Lancers are an interesting group of individuals, since they want to carry on the legacy of Helena and the Legion of Dawn by doing what they did, protecting the very people in the forts, and learning more about how the world works. At the moment, the Lancers seem limited in numbers and don't look that active. Whether this is because people are still feeling the damage of the Heart of Rage caused is unknown, but we do know that people's hopes are starting to return thanks to those that dealt with the Heart of Rage once and for all. But I have a feeling the Lancers will all need to come together and work as one to counter a big and common threat that humanity once dealt with in the past. For all we know, what we're going to have to do is carry on doing what needs to be done until that threat then comes. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, a sub and share for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one.